Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sadi, and today we're going to create the background used in my last tutorial. If you haven't seen the first part, I would recommend you do that first. I'll link it in the card as well as in the description. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the B-spline mask. You can use this background in a ton of ways. As usual, the comp file is included in the description. If you're brand new to Fusion, you can watch the title animation primer, which explains how nodes work and all the other basics. With that said, let's dive in. Let me start with a common project setup in sRGB at 1920 with 30 frames a second and make it 60 seconds long. I'm going to bring in my swatches and then set up the two shades of orange that I need for this project. Okay, with the project set up, the first thing I'm going to do is create a gradient background node. And we're gonna change it to gradient. First color will be light orange. The second color will be the dark orange. I'm gonna rename the gradient. Then I'm going to animate the gradient handle just to give the background a little bit of life. So I'm gonna to go to frame zero and click on animate start and end. And then I'll go to frame 500 and move these handles just like that. And then 1000, move a little more, 1500. So every 500 frames, moving these gradient handles and then the last frame is 1799 move this a little more the effect is pretty subtle you probably won't even notice it unless i'd mentioned it but that's the whole point since this is just a background we want to draw the audience's eye to the foreground title animation so the key is to use creative restraint we don't want the soft background to be competing with the foreground title animation for the audience's attention. Next, I'm going to create these organic looking boomerang shapes. So background, type it in, gradient, pick screen color, the other side, pick screen color, okay. And then B-spline, and then I'm gonna draw the spline with five points. One, two, three, four, and five. I'll lock it down. So it's like a little bean. And then if you hit Shift M, you can modify only. So you're not adding points, you can modify them just like that. The difference between Bezier curves and B spline curves is that the math is different behind them. So B splines make these really smooth uh, corners, whereas Bezier curves give you the option to make pointy corners. Right now, the gradient handles of the shape are very similar to the gradient node that we made earlier. So you can't really see the shape, but if you move the handles, you can see them. Now, if you move them in the opposite direction, you have a lot of contrast so you can see the shape. What I want to do is have something similar to the background. So what you will have is, the more similar you have, you'll have these sort of edges that fade out. See that? And in this case, the, the dark orange, if I pull it back, you can see that it merges with the background, so it kind of fades out. Now what I'm going to do is animate this shape. So before I do that, let me bring in an, a transform node. So I can stand it up like so, and I'm gonna put it right here. To animate this, what I'm going to do is go to the first frame and click on these animation diamonds and the mask, and then right click on shape animation, set key. So that's my first frame. Then I'm going to go to 200 and move these points just so that the shape starts moving a little bit. And then this will create automatic keyframes for me. So as I'm moving forward in time, the keyframes will keep being created. 
So every 200 frames, you can do more or less if you want. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. And so on. Let me just fast forward this process. Okay, that shape is done now. Now what I'm going to do is animate the transform every 500 frames to give the whole boomerang thing uh, some movement, but it's going to be very, very subtle. So on frame zero, I'm going to click on center, and I'll also take the angle because I'm going to be rotating it. Then I'll leave it there. Then on frame 500, I'll move it and rotate it. Okay. Frame 1000. Rotate it back. Move it up. Frame 1500. And the last frame, which is 1799. It's 1799 because frame zero is also counted as frame one. So that's how you create this shape and you give it a little bit of movement, very subtle. Now I'm going to add a blur node to give the edge of this shape a little bit of softness. I'm going to go with two blur size and 50% blend. So if you look in closely, you see that there is a slight softening of the edge, which is how I want this. Next, I can just copy all these nodes and make two more shapes out of them, like that. And because the blur is not, I don't need individual blurs on each of them, what I can do is put one blur on this whole node tree. So let me show you how that's done. Okay. Delete these two blurs. And then I'm going to merge these like so. And then the blur can be applied on all three of them. And then this can go into the merge here. Let me just go ahead and make it a little bit more neat. And I'm going to rename these nodes quickly. Okay, now that we've renamed these nodes, I am going to start moving them around. So first frame, we're going to move it right here and change the angle a little bit. There's good. And I will make the size smaller too. Next frame, we're going to move up next frame okay then i'll do the same thing for the last one so i went ahead and animated just the transforms on the the other two shapes, just different sizes, and move them around every 500 frames or so. And this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and make a section out of it. Underlay. I'm going to give it a teal color. And that's good. And then finally, I'm going to go into this merge and turn down the blend opacity so these shapes are blending with the background a little more. Now before I continue, I'm going to save my file as I work. As you know, if you click on Fusion, it does not give you an option to save. So I'm going to choose all of my nodes, just like that. Copy, make a new notepad file, text editor, and paste it in there. And I can save this on the desktop and close this. So as I'm working, I'll keep saving it in a text editor so that I don't lose my comp. And that way I can import this, copy and paste the comp into any project that I'm working on 
without having to deal with Resolve's own project files and a file management database. Now what I want to do is create some primitive uh, sphere shapes uh, to contrast with my sort of organic looking B-spline shapes. So for that, I'm going to create a background node. And I'm going to make a gradient for this. Pick screen color. I'll take my two trusty colors here. Okay. And then I'll pipe this in and put an ellipse mask on it. There you go. And that looks good. Now I can go back and move my gradient handles to give it a little bit of shape. Now, again, if you extend these, they are going to, these uh, spheres are going to blend in with the background a little more. And if you give them a lot of one type of color, then they'll contrast with the background and have more of an edge. Next, what I want to do is give it a little bit of grain. So I'm going to use my film grain node. I use this technique a lot where I'll be using flat color motion graphics, but I'll add some texture to them just to give it more depth. So I'm going to set up my film grain node uh, to have this subtle grain look. Then I'm going to add a transform node to my sphere, and now I can animate. I'll do the same thing that I did earlier. Every 500 frames, I'm going to change the size, the position, and as well as the gradient handle. So I'll do the first one, and then I'll copy and paste three more spheres just like it. So let's go to frame zero. Let's start right here. This size is a little bit too big. That looks good. Okay. And then we're going to animate center, which is position, size. And we're also going to animate the background handle right here, which we'll do separately. So frame zero, that looks good. Go to frame 500. I'm going to move the position, then 1,000. Fifteen hundred. And the last frame. Okay. So that was in the transform node. Now I'm going to go back to my background for this sphere. And I'm going to animate the handles. So I'm going to go to frame zero and animate start and end of the background, and I'll leave it like that. Then frame 500, and move these handles. So as you can see, the color will change. And then random different direction. Maybe go like that. And the last one. I'm going to move the orange, the dark orange to kind of match what's happening in the background. And this is going to make it fade out a little bit. Okay. So that's done. Now I'm just going to go ahead, rename these nodes, and copy and paste three more instances of it. And then I'll come back. So I went ahead and copy and pasted the first sphere and made three more copies and just went and changed the uh, random transform values. And now I'm going to go and turn the opacity down for the whole stack to maybe 50%. So they blend in with the background a little bit more. Okay, so I went ahead and renamed the nodes and used an underlay to make this little section neat. Remember, we can do this with particles as well. I'll show you this way, and then the particle systems we're going to use for another element later in the tutorial. Now, before we move on, I'm just going to copy all these nodes and go back to my text file, delete the previous composition. I'll just paste this in and save it.
Next, we're going to make a pretty cool element with lines. So I'm going to make some room here, and it's going to go in the bottom. So background node, another background node. Merge the two together. So the bottom one will have the dark orange color. And the foreground one will have the light color. OK, we go ahead and view this. Now I'm going to put a rectangle mask on the foreground right here. Increase the width all the way and decrease the height. Something really, really thin. That's good. And I'm going to move it up. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to duplicate this. Duplicate node. That is not the correct duplicate node. That's actually a Crocodile plugin node. Let me delete that. Bring in my standard stock duplicate node. If I'm using any plugins, I will say so in the beginning of the tutorial so you guys know what I'm doing. Uh, usually these tutorials will only have stock nodes. Okay, so I've piped in my duplicate node in here. I'm going to make 100 copies. And then I'm going to move the Y axis down to make these lines like that. Let's zoom in a little bit. 0 0.4846, that looks OK. Next, I'm going to add a transform node. And I will angle this to 20 degrees like so. Let's make the size bigger so we can cover the canvas like this. And tweak the settings in the duplicate node to give it more lines. That's good. Now what I'm going to do is pipe this into my composition. And I'll view this in the viewer, this merge. And I'm going to make a B-spline node, BSP, and pipe this in here. And create a bean shape. Close it. And here we have our lined a boomerang shape. I'm going to turn this down a little bit to maybe a little less than half. That looks good. And now every 500 frames, I'm going to go into the spline, the B spline mask, and I'm going to animate the, the points just like I did for the boomerang section. So let me fast forward this section. Okay, so now we have a little bit of movement with the mask itself. So I'm going to duplicate this one more time and I'll delete the mask. I'll create a new one with some random shapes to animate. So, okay, this section looks good too. Let's go ahead and view our final output node. And now it's coming together. Last, what I want to do is bring in some particles. And the benefit of using particles is that we don't have to animate them. They will randomly move around based on the settings for the particle system. If you're brand new to particle systems, you can check out the Particle Basics tutorial, which talks about these particle systems and all the functions in these nodes in detail. Let's start by creating a particle system and a particle renderer. Notice that the particle renderer defaults to 3D, but if you pipe it into a 2D scene, it automatically changes to a 2D version. Here's your default particle system. This is what it looks like. First, I'm going to set the region where the particles are being emitted. Right now, it's that small circle in the middle. I'm going to change this to all. So now the particles are everywhere. They're really small, so it's kind of hard to see. 
Next, I'm going to create a small shape, a circle, to be the particle sprite. So background node, ellipse mask, and then let's view this, change the color to white, and in the mask, I will say not solid, but actually a border. Go ahead and link the height and the width together so I can just control them together. And we'll make it about this big and thinner. That looks about right. Maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. Then I'll go into the particle emitter and the style. The default is point. I'm going to change that to bitmap. When I do that, I see this yellow input not appear here where I can pipe in my sprite. So now if I view the composition, these particles will be these little rings. Since we only have a few particles, I can have them a little bit bigger. That looks about the right size. A little thicker. That's perfect. Now there are too many of them, of course, so we can turn that down by going into the particle emitter. And here's how many particles are being generated each frame. So I'll turn this down, and that's perfect. And I can have about 200 frames. Lifespan is good. Let's go into size. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a variance for size. So not all particles are the same size. And I don't want to have a very prominent pop in, pop out sort of deal. So I'm going to give it a little fade. Next, we're going to give them a little bit of velocity. So they have a little bit of movement going on. And a little angle variance. I think what I want to do is turn the opacity down because I don't need these circles to be that prominent. About halfway would be good. And then I'm going to just go ahead, take this particle system, and create another one. And this time, I'll give it a different shape. So let's take a rectangle mask, pipe it in. Let's give us some room. And notice that the second particle system, the small sprites are in the same spot where the other ones are. To change that, go to the emitter and just hit reseed. So this is going to generate a random number for you for the position. So I'm going to make this a little um, plus sign, and then I'm going to make it a cross, okay? So I'm going to copy and paste my mask. And there I have it, and I can fine tune this. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's good. And we can put a transform node in the middle. And give it an angle. There you go. There you have it. The second particle system is ready. And everything else, all the settings are perfect for us. You don't have to tweak anything. The only thing is that the size is pretty small. So I can change that here. And that's good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And also, on the first frame, I noticed there's no particles. So they're not pre-generating. 
uh, which is the default behavior. So I'm going to go into the renderer and pre-generate 30 frames. All these options for particle systems are pretty well covered in the particle basics tutorial that I did. So if you're having trouble with particles, definitely check out the particle tutorials I've done. And then I'm going to turn down the, the level to maybe that much. That's good. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename these nodes and make a little underlay for them. Okay. And then I think we're almost there. There was one more thing that I did in the original, and then I'll show you. And that's adding some noise uh, to the background just to give it a little bit more character. So we're going to bring in some Perlin action here. In Fusion, it's called Fast Noise. And this is, if you're not familiar with Fast Noise, you're going to be using a lot of it in motion graphics. So uh, definitely start playing with it. I'm going to change the two colors of the noise to my basic colors here. Light and dark orange, like that. And then I'll set it up with seed rate, which is going to give it a little bit of movement and bring the opacity down. And now if I play it, you can see that there's a little bit of texture moving in the background. There you have it, guys. Now you can use this background technique in your own projects. Uh, this project file is linked in the description as usual. Feel free to grab it and use it or change it or just learn with it. Hope you guys learned something new today. My name is Sadi. Happy compositing and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.